Hey everyone, today we are going to be going over Lightroom 4, just the basics of what things are, how to get around, and how to import your photos. So this is Lightroom 4. Um, the basic thing you probably need to know first off the bat is that there's these things called modules, right? Right now I'm in the library module. Uh, the library module basically lets you look around and import things and check out all your photos. There's the development module. This lets you develop your photos. There's the, the map module, which basically lets you <clears throat> either manually pin where you took a photo to a, a map, or if you have a camera or an add-on device that records the GPS of a photo, it'll automatically tag a map with that. Uh, <clears throat> the book module is for printing books and like photo albums and so forth. Uh, the print module is for soft printing and preparing photos for print, and the web module is for making like a web gallery. So we're not really going to worry about any of these today. We're just going to focus on the library. <clears throat> so going back to the library, um, obviously your, your options to control your modules are up here. Normally when you're in the library, you probably start with what's called a, a grid view. This is me just testing photos. In fact, that's kind of embarrassing, so I'm going to go ahead and switch that. Um, these are just random photos, so that's fine. When you're in library mode, you're going to have your navigator at the top. Uh, a lot of people leave the navigator closed, and when they do, they can use these options to zoom in onto a photo. You have your catalog, your folders, and your collections. And yeah, I know you don't know what these things mean right now, but we'll go over these in a minute. Basically, just think of this as like a fancy file browser. In the center area, you're going to have all your, your photos. Right now, I'm in grid view, and you know that because, well, obviously, they're forming a grid. If I didn't want to be in grid view, if I wanted to maybe look at just one photo, I could click this little guy down here and it shows me one photo. Right now I'm zoomed in. Um, I can zoom back out by just clicking fit. At the very bottom of the screen you have your film strip. and This lets you kind of scroll through all your photos and see which ones you have. So, to get started... We're going to not even mess with Lightroom. The very first thing you need to do is figure out how you're going to handle your files. All right, now I'm just going to make a folder. I'm going to call it uh, Lightroom Toot, and it's short for tutorial. And I'm just going to grab a random photo and throw it in there. Lightroom is great for managing photos. You know, I, if I go back to my library, I have right now like 33,000 photos in my Lightroom catalog. Uh, I change that yearly so every other year, every year I have a new catalog so you know come come January 1st I'll save this one out and I'll start the next one. And as a photographer when you're constantly going on shoots and then constantly having to manage those thousands and thousands of photos it's really helpful to use a program like Lightroom to do that. And it all starts with your basic folder. The, the One of the most basic things you have to do with Lightroom is you have to keep all of your photos in one folder. You know, I mean, technically you don't have to, but but <laughs> it really works best that way. In this case, I actually have a dedicated hard drive for for all my photos. I call it Wally, -E, And I have all my photos in a folder called Pics. I have my personal photos and my work photos. So every time I get a new assignment, uh, in this case we're going to call this one Lightroom Tut, for, you know, short for Lightroom Tutorial. I'm just going to throw in a few other random things in there. Uh, this, we'll throw this in there. Uh, we'll throw this in there. All right. I'm going to take my Lightroom Tut. I'm going to pretend that I just did a shooting assignment. I just copied these files from uh, a card. And I'm going to drag into my work photos, and we'll do, we'll do 2013. I'm dropping it in there. Once I have my photos in the proper chain of uh, folders, I can then import in Lightroom. So let's go back to Lightroom. I'll go to Import. In this case, at my, my source would be Wally. -E. My folder would be Pics, Work Photos, 2013, and Lightroom Tut. Right now it's going to show me what folders are in there. One of the good important options to have selected when you're importing is this one over here, don't import suspected duplicates. Uh, it'll help prevent you from really clogging up your 
catalog with replicated photos. In my case, because I always put the photos manually in the folder I want them kept at permanently, all I do is I just click the add button and it'll add these photos in the proper order into my Lightroom catalog. Uh, if you're copying directly from an SD card, you probably would want to use either copy or move. But in this case, I'm just going to select add. Once you do that, the next step, and you can kind of read this from, from left to right. You know, we're going from Wally, my hard drive where the folder is. We are going to add the photos. It's, what are we adding to? We're adding to my catalog, which is, that's my main hard drive. What are we going to do to the files? Uh, this is always up to debate on what you want to do. Personally, when I import my files, I select the standard option for previews. Uh, this basically just decides, you know, how much it's going to render. Most people normally do minimum or they do the one-on-one. -on -one. I don't like the minimal because when you're scrolling through your photos in Lightroom, it just takes forever to do so because you only get little thumbnail previews. And if you want something more, you have to sit and wait for it to render. I don't like the one-on-one -on -one because after, I think it's 30 days, Lightroom wipes your one-on-one -on -one category, your one-on-one -on -one catalog. So you wait, you know, 15, 20 minutes for all these photos to render, and Lightroom, well, we're going to forget those in 30 days. And that makes sense, you know. Of course, Lightroom's not going to clog it up with all these these files, the, you know, 30,000-some photos for all year long. It's going to wipe it after a month. Um, but that's why it's just standard, because it's, it's a nice middle ground where I can see a pretty big size photo without rendering. And then when I do want to zoom in and, and really check out my select photos, um, I don't mind waiting a few seconds for those. So I always pick standard. For development settings, if I have a preset, I want to automatically handle for me. This is where I would select it. Uh, you guys don't need to really worry about that yet. And copyright information. Uh, you Right now, copyright is a, a preset that I created. But we're going to go ahead and make a new one from scratch. So I'll select new. It's going to pop it up. I can name my preset. I can add a basic name for all the metadata. Camera info, GPS, copyright info, copyright status, you know, all that kind of stuff. And all this you can change after the fact, but honestly, it's so much easier to have a preset and have it automatically do it for you than have to go through manually for, you know, 100 or more photos. So it's really nice to, to have this set up ahead of time for yourself. Uh, so if you go back to look at my, my copyright one, I'm going to click uh, edit preset. In mine, I just have a very, very, oops, a very, very basic metadata. Nothing too fancy. You know, I have my name, as it's copyrighted. I have not an address. <laughs> I have a website and all that kind of stuff. So nothing too fancy. Just very basics. So once I'm happy with all that kind of stuff, I can also add keywords here. Um, I don't shoot that many photos that I really need to do a lot of search because I'm very organized in my folders. I don't only add keywords. But if you're going to add keywords, this is a, is a good place to do it. The, normally, at this point, you want the keywords to be very generic. So let's say I went to Paris and I did a photo walk. I might call this Paris Photo Walk because obviously probably on that photo walk, you visited multiple locations. So you don't really want to get specific with your keywords when you're importing them. Uh, you Just the very generic keywords, and you can add the rest later. But I'm not adding any keywords for this, especially since it's just a tutorial, so I'm just going to click Import. If you look up here, it's going to be importing files at the current location. Once they're importing, it's going to render. I did standard, so it's, it did take a few seconds. Now we're in here, right? These are the four photos that I imported. If I wanted to check out a close-up of the photo, I can double-click it. Oh, that's Paige. That's my puppy. Whoops. If I want to go back to grid view, I can hit here. If I want to compare photos, I can hit the X and Y. Uh, these are bad examples. Let's say I had like, you know, four or five photos of, of her and I was trying to pick which one was the best. The compare tool is very, very useful for that. And those are the very basics of how to import photos. Once we import fo photos, it gets pretty complicated. I'm going to pick a photo shoot that I did. Let's do... Let's do Aubrey. She's my niece, and I did senior photos for her. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of photos. 
And it's a lot of photos to deal with, you know? It's, it's oh my gosh, I got to sort through all these photos and pick which ones are the best. Oh, this is going to be so much work. Honestly, it really isn't that much work because Lightroom makes it easy for you. One of the awesome things about Lightroom is that it lets you mark or tag photos, right? Uh, I'm going to double click this one. Obviously, I'm still getting my settings right. So that's one that would not be a keeper. But if you look at the bottom of the screen, there are these options right here. There's these colors. There's these stars. There's these flags. And these options technically are, are filters, is what they're called. And they're filtering what's in my film strip. Because I have no filters picked, nothing's being filtered down here. Sorry, there's my phone. So what we can do is mark our photos, which makes them easier to find and sort. Uh, in this case, let's say... Well, you know, I'm just going to tell you what I do. What I normally do is I, I don't mess with stars. And here's the problem with stars, is that, okay, it's obvious what a five star is. It's obvious what a one star is. What are the ones in the middle? You know, it's like, okay, I want my good photos and I want my bad photos. And there's normally not a middle ground. You know, you don't want to show someone a photo that's like, eh, this is my C photo. What do you think of that? You really are only ever going to show people your A photo. So generally, instead of using stars, what I use are flags. And for flags, all you have to do is, right now I'm using the arrow keys to, to, to select left and right through the photos. Let's say I find a photo I like. Oh, here we go. Here's one I like, right? So what I can do is it's rendering because I did standard previews. So it doesn't have a, a full render of it yet. There we go. If I like it, I can hit the P button, which counts as a pick. And then if I turn on my filters, you're going to see all my picks for this photo shoot. Pretty simple, right? So that way you can quickly go through. It's like, no, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. Oh, you know what? I like that one. I'm going to pick it. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. Oh, you know what? That was a great expression. I really like that one. I'm going to pick that one. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it. So using this method, you can quickly go through all your photos and determine which ones are keepers and which ones aren't keepers. Then, once you have your keepers, this is where Lightroom gets even more exciting, right? I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to turn my filters on so I can see which one are my picks. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go over here to a collection. Uh, the best way to think of collections Actually, let me scroll up. So these, these are my folders, right? These are how I have all my, my photos organized. I, I'm very weird. I do mine by summer and winter and years. I, I know that's very odd. Um, but it works for me. It's what I've been doing, obviously, since you know 2008 and before. But these are where I keep my, my photos, you know? When I go to these folders, I don't have to, I don't want to go through and sort through all the, the ugly, bad ones. I just want to see my pics. So what people do, myself included, is we use collections. A collection is kind of like the equivalent of a playlist in iTunes, you know? In iTunes, you have your big music library, and then you have your playlist. And you can pick songs to go on your playlist. Well, collections are kind of like playlists for photos. Um... In this case, I'm selecting all these songs, i.e. photos. I'm going to make a new collection, i.e. playlist. Uh, collection set, we'll call this uh, Aubrey Singer Portraits. In this case, we'll just do a top level. Um, I delete all my... I move my collections so they wouldn't be clogging it up, but normally I would have... Same way as my folders. I would have, you know, my 2012 collection, my 2013 collection. And then she would go inside, you know, the proper year. But anyway, so if I go to the, the Aubrey portrait collection. Oh, see, this is what happened. I got a text message and it got me flustered and I completely just lost what I was doing. Let me go back. Work photos, Aubrey. I'm going to look at my pics. I'm going to highlight my picks, and I'm just going to drag all these picks right to Aubrey Senior Portraits. Uh, 
What did I do? Oh, I am a dumb butt. I create. I select create collection set. I meant create collection. Duh. Aubrey. Create. Now there we go. See now it automatically made a, a smart collection and it put the photos I had selected into it, right? So now whenever I just want to get those photos back of Aubrey and only look at the good ones, all I have to do is just go back to my collections and find it. I don't have to go through and re wave through all the folders and then look at all the bad ones. I can go directly to, okay, this is the collection. This is the good one. We are good to go. Uh, and those are the basics of, of maneuvering through the library and dealing with collections and organizing your photos. Uh, I do want to point out a, a few tips and tricks here for Lightroom that can be helpful when you're maneuvering. Uh, the first, I'm going to quickly slip over to the development tab. I know we haven't gone over this yet, but this is a good place to go over it. If I right click in this gray area on any of these, make sure you have solo mode selected. And what it does is see how I have effects open. If I click details, It's thinking about it. There you go. If I click details, details opens, and then look, effects closed for me. So solo mode helps just keep it organized and a lot less cluttered. It's, it's very, very useful. The, the next thing I want to point out is see this little arrow on the side? It closes these tabs. Like over here, too, I can close that if I wanted, right? By default, Lightroom has it set up, so these are actually on auto. Uh, well, let me go to the auto hide. So it's not there, but if I go over to do something, all right, well, if, <laughs> it normally pops up. It's very annoying. What you want it set on is you always want it set on manual. You want to be able to manually control when it opens and when it closes. So make sure you do it for this side. Right click, select manual, and then right click and select manual. It'll make life much, much, much easier. Because there's times when you go to click on something and then it disappears and you can't click on what you want to click on. It's very, very aggravating. Uh, keyboard shortcut to do basically what I just did. See how I'm making them both disappear? I'm hitting the tab button. The tab button makes them disappear. The space bar will zoom in. It's pixelated just because it's, it's not rendering. See, there you go. So that's the space bar. The L button, it turns the lights off so that way you can only focus on the photo. And the L, this, this really works well with watch. Well, this isn't a good photo. Let me get a, a, a landscape photo. So if I hit the tab button, I'm going to make these disappear. I'm going to hit the L button. You know, it lets you see your photo without being distracted by all the other junk that's going on. Uh, look at my notes real quick. Yeah, I think that's it. Those are the basics of how to maneuver around in Lightroom. Uh, we will be doing a tutorial on development next. Hope this helped.